Well, part of what's going to drive the debate, that certainly in Washington, is going to be, I guess, how people sort of view the case for crypto. Is it just a speculative asset? Is it a store of value similar to gold? Or is there a use case for it as a transactional means here? What's the argument that you make? Yeah, well, look, first of all, let me just say that the token-focused approach to this conversation, I always say, is the wrong approach. So forget about the crypto tokens for a minute. Think about the networks that are the reason the crypto tokens exist. That, that's all tokens are about, okay, is to induce people to participate in networks. So forget about whether, you know, Tezos or Filecoin or Uniswap are going to be more valuable tomorrow or less valuable tomorrow. The question is, do you have a thesis for the underlying thing that they're powering? So think about it this way. You don't buy Apple stock because you think that the stock is going up or down. You buy Apple stock because you think that iPhones are going to win in the market. And if they win in the market, then by definition, your stock is going to go up in value. Same thing here. If you think Ethereum is the best platform to build financial services apps, then ETH tokens are going to go up in value. Stop thinking about the, the sort of the technical analysis of the shape of the price movements and start focusing on the network that's being built. The networks that win will have very valuable tokens, and it's more like that than it is about the tokens themselves. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Belief Bag, where we talk about prophetic dreams and visions and exit and investment strategies for the wealth transfer and our crypto bags. Now this is Kelly and that interview was with Brian Brooks, the previous comptroller of the currency. One of my favorite people to listen to when it comes to the future of crypto. Now he really understands this industry and he is all about decentralized networks moving into the future. And you heard him focus on the best networks because those will be the tokens that win. Now, you are going to be a founding citizen in a fully decentralized network right from token launch. I believe Flare is going to be something we look back on as a game changer for our families, a way to be able to navigate around the changing banking system. A massive engineering project that ultimately created a decentralized network meant to connect all networks. Now, as a fork of the XRP ledger, Flare Network complements and is like a sister to the XRPL. This utility network does just that. It provides utility for XRP and other non-smart contract assets, which is about 70 to 75 percent of the tokens in the crypto space. That's a lot of assets that could potentially run through Flare and gain additional superpowers. Now, are you starting to see a little of what I'm seeing here? Huge, huge opportunity. Today, we will finish the fundamentals of the Flare network by covering the native token Flare, FLR. What is the role of the FLR token in this network? Well, the native token is the collateral that ensures the assets brought to the network the F assets, which we discussed in the last video. And FLR is also the collateral that is locked up to ensure the bridges when crossing between attached networks. This asset has incredible built-in utility from day one. Now in this video, we'll cover the superpowers of the Flare token. Superpower number one, like the F assets we covered in the last video, each Flare token also has two detachable votes. The first is the governance vote. Since there is no centralized entity controlling this network, changes are voted on by the Flare token holders going forward through this governance vote. Flare token holders are referred to as citizens of the network. Now the second vote goes to the FTSO, the Flare Time Series Oracle. This vote goes to the providers which source and send decentralized data and price feeds every three minutes to the FTSO. These data feeds are crucial to the network and smart contracts to operate in a decentralized way. Another blockchain may rely on centralized data providers to provide their data. Now, for example, knowing the most accurate price of XRP slash USD, let's say, is how this network 
is able to know just how much flare to lock up in the smart contracts to secure XRP when it is minted onto the network to become FXRP. Superpower number two, compoundable rewards. For example, while delegating your detachable votes, you can also lend your flare out. Simultaneously, as delegating your votes, you can also lend your earned flare tokens out to be locked up as collateral in the F asset minting service or other applications. Now remember, every time an asset like XRP or Bitcoin is brought here, two and a half times the value of that asset must be locked up in FLR. We can lend our personal flare tokens to be used for this service if we so choose. Curious what the rewards are for lending your flare to these minting agents? You get paid back a percentage of what those minting fees are. Now, from what I understand, that will be paid back in the original assets that are being brought to the network, be it XRP, XLM, Bitcoin, Algorand, Doge, Filecoin, or Litecoin. And remember, all that comes from loaning out a token you may not have even purchased, but you earned from delegating your votes. Pretty incredible. Now we get to earn, for lack of a better term, these top shelf cryptos all for learn lending out flare. Now large amounts of flare will need to be locked up as asset prices go up and as this network grows. So keep that in mind. That's compounding yield there, guys. You get to loan your tokens simultaneously as still delegating that vote power. I hope that's clear. Note, since the tokens are leaving your wallet and being utilized by the network, there is a little bit of risk. But from what I understand, it's a small risk. You now have to continue to trust the network to carry out its code and then request your flare back when you're done loaning it. Now, superpower number three, monthly rewards from the distribution rewards pool. If the first governance vote passes, let me lay out what distribution rewards will look like. For those of you that were not aware, Flare Network offered a reward of free Flare tokens to XRP holders that held XRP on the snapshot day back in December of 2020. Those that qualify will be getting 15% of those Flare rewards airdropped to them at network launch around the second week in January. What may be changing from there is what happens to the remaining 85% of the tokens left in this pool after that initial airdrop. Now, once the token generation event happens and the majority of tokens are airdropped to recipients, there will be a vote either to keep the remaining 36 month distribution like it is, or the new proposal is to take that remaining 85% of tokens from this distribution pool and pay those people going forward that are actively engaging with the network. Basically, it removes the rewards for those that turn around and sell their airdrop flare on exchanges and gives the ongoing rewards to those that utilize their flare tokens. Good news for those that were not around in December of 2020 and missed the snapshot. Now, if you like, you can buy Flare off the exchanges and be a part of the distribution pool going forward. This is how it could look if the vote passes. Three times every month at ran random intervals, the system will take a snapshot of how much Flare that we each have wrapped in our wallets and the votes delegated to the FTSO providers. Whatever percentage we are engaging with the network is in return how much of the monthly flare distribution rewards we will get from this 36 month distribution pool. The flare earned from some of these pools could be massive in the beginning. While participation is still low, if you too want to start earning exponential rewards as soon as these pools open to the public, stick around for another minute and I will show you how to wrap and delegate votes to the F. TSO providers. Because this step is so easy, I believe most of you will do this right out of the gates. Now this is just scratching the surface of yield. 
I can't even begin to wrap my head around the exponential compounding yield available here. It will be greater than most have ever seen in their lifetimes, greater than what many people have ever experienced with regular investments for sure. This is a generational wealth maker on its own. But just think of what this could mean for those in this community. You know the saying, give a man a fish. I would look at this prophetic seed money as we've been given our fish. But by becoming familiar with this network, we are learning how to fish going forward so that we can keep growing this wealth in a safe, more decentralized way, a permissionless way, which is key because it can't be stopped. If someone doesn't like our spiritual or our political views, I, we can't we can continue to use this network permissionlessly. Now a recap, by bringing some of your assets to this network, your assets are backed by two and a half times their value in Flare tokens. This collateral secures your assets and it also secures the bridges. This allows for trust, trustless token representations of our assets that can now be used in smart contracts and earn all kinds of yield. But now our assets can also cross between chains in their insured F asset form and through insured bridges called layer cake. Now, because crossing between chains is secure, it will enable a safer and proper decentralized cross chain future. Wherever you need your assets to go, be it to pay for real estate or buy a business or cross to use applications on other chains that can all be done now in a trustless safer manner. I imagine much of where we will need to navigate in the future will begin with this network. And this is just the basics. This is going to just get larger and larger and more lucrative, but also more accessible as our needs grow. So much, um, so much is going to be built, built here, but you really just need to know the basics from the beginning. And from what I gather, much of what that will be done inside these connected wallets. So just to show you how simple redeeming your earned flare, wrapping it and delegating it to the FTSO providers is, watch me do it with flares test network here using the Songbird token inside the Bifrost wallet. Okay, first we're gonna click on the Bifrost wallet in our phone applications. Next, I'll click on Wrapped Songbird. Then I'll click on the three dots on the right. Delegate. And you're gonna see I have 34.55 unclaimed rewards. I'm gonna claim those. As you see here, I have zero unclaimed rewards now. So I'm gonna go back. And now I'm gonna have Songbird that I have unwrapped. So I'm gonna to need to wrap it. So I click on Songbird, and you see it goes from five to 40 Songbird, because I just claim those rewards and I'm gonna wrap them, but I'm gonna leave about four in here for transaction fees unwrapped. So I'm gonna claim about or I'm going to wrap about 35. Confirm. Now I'm going to go back up to the three dots to delegate. And now those are going to be delegated to those FTSO providers that I manage. I have two listed at the bottom there. And that's it. That's how you redeem, wrap, and delegate uh, your songbird, and eventually it'll be flare. And it might be somewhat different, but you got the idea. Those that asked about wallets, right now I see myself using this, the Bifrost wallet, considered a soft wallet, that you download from your phone's app store, and the Decent hardware wallet, D-C-E-N-T, hardware wallet. Similar to a ledger device, the Decent wallet is a biometric fingerprint wallet that also has a phone application that you can connect and interact with the Flare network is the way I understand it. 
Now going into the future, our Ledger Nanos may even connect, but I personally think it's a good idea to have assets split between different types of hardware wallets anyways. You never know. Ledger Live could go offline for a bit, and I like the idea of also having a fingerprint wallet. Now please remember, these videos are for learning the foundation of Flare Network. Each person really needs to go out there and expand on this knowledge as we move forward. And also, please remember that nothing I ever say or write in comments should be construed as investment or financial advice. Another thought I wanted the community to ponder on. After we are on the other side of this transfer, we may want to recruit a couple of Flare Network experts to continue to train us with step-by-step -step videos on how to use, utilize this network for all of our needs and purposes. I am only capable, at least right now, of guiding people through the base of this network. All its future potential uses are still way beyond my scope of comprehension. Now, we will need experts that can show us every way to invest, every way we can navigate to these decentralized applications that are going to be brought over because this is built uh, with the Ethereum virtual machine. I heard there's like a thousand D apps um, that will be coming over that may assist us in buying real estate or businesses. It, we need people to tell us the risks, the benefits to literally doing anything and everything that we may not even be able to fathom yet. Let's say we need a particular application that isn't available. Now, as a community, I believe there is even a way to pool some of our earned tokens to crowdfund applications that we may not need or that we may need built on this network in the future. And please remember, this network will become more and more user friendly as time goes on. So give it grace and give yourself grace. I also think it's important to say that we really do not know what the upcoming chaos in the markets are going to look like and how bad it could get for people. And because of that, please remember my email going forward. It is simply beliefbag at gmail.com, beliefbag at gmail.com. If any of our channels go down or if channels need to go private, or maybe we end up having a private group as a community completely off of YouTube. This way, you know how to get a hold of me. Now, thanks for supporting me trying to get the word out here about this avenue for our XRP and our other assets moving into the future. Prayers and blessings to all of you. Thanks so much.